Hey guys, welcome back to the Iconic Imaging Digital Trade Show Segment 2. Uh, we're here to uh, show you some rapid mask and some half tones. So um, I'm going to turn it over and, and show you our surprise guest here, Grizzly Adams. You want to introduce yourself? Hi guys, I'm uh, Grizzly Adams, or otherwise better known as Andy Hiradka in the Eastern uh, technical sales rep for Iconics Imaging, and uh, glad to be on Michaela's virtual trip show. Thanks for joining us today in my garage. So let's get started. I'll turn it over to Andy, and he'll show you what we do next. Great. Thanks, Michaela. So uh, today we're going to blast a half tone. Uh, half tone is just another word for a photograph. Um, it's basically taking a high quality digital picture and reducing the image size or image quality to um, a sand blastable or sand carvable picture. So like this here is a 45 uh, LPI or DPI half tone um, printed on AccuBlack inkjet film. Uh, we will apply it to the rapid mask HD, the two mil, which is the only two mil film on the market and gives the highest quality or highest detail out of any photoresist film on the market because it is the, the only two mil. Uh, and the rule of thumb there is the thinner the deep or thinner the film, the higher the detail. So we'll expose this to the dry process rapid mask HD and then we'll apply it and uh, and blast it. So getting started, um, we've already printed this off, it's ready to go. The side of the rapid mask you want to expose to is the side you can scratch. Kind of hard to see, but I scratched that side. The uh, slip, uh, the carrier sheet side, you cannot scratch. So we'll apply the printed side of the artwork onto the uh, emulsion side of the wrapping mask, which is the side you can scratch, and we'll expose it in the electrolyte exposure unit here for two minutes. I'm just closing up the electrolyte and minutes exposure there so folks if you're watching uh, make sure that when you lay down your artwork and your rapid mask inside the electrolyte that your artwork the back of your artwork is going to be facing out so it's going to be facing towards your light when it's exposing another thing that I just wanted to show you guys um, I get a lot of questions about these when we're out at the trade shows. I heard a lot about it in Vegas, but they were really curious about where I got this case. It's just kind of a really cool thing. Um, so just to conserve your rapid mass supply or, or your film supply, um, since it is light sensitive, we need to keep it in a case uh, so that it doesn't get exposed by your natural sunlight or, or your shop light. Um, but what I did is I cut my rapid mass down into fours because normally they come in a in a box, about eight and a half by 11. Um, so cut down into fours. I put it in this nice little case, and honestly, I just got this case from Walmart, and it's a it's like a CD jewel case, um, but instead, I just I cut out all the little CD slots in it so I can use it for my rapid mask and have it stored away and easy to get at. So yeah, as this is exposing, Andy, do you have any tips for us about Rapid mask or exposing? Uh, no, a little bit to add to what you said on the sheets. The sheets actually come in a 10 by 12 inch format and it comes in a 10 sheet box or a 25 sheet box or rolls by 10, uh, 12 inch wide by 25 foot or 12 inch wide by 100 foot um, or 26 wide actually by 10 foot or wide long items. And uh, we should talk about the, um, the film is white light tolerant to an extent. You know, in, in Michaela's garage here, uh, with indoor lighting, we have by at least a half hour of working time. Uh, so the rapid mass, surprisingly, is actually more white light tolerant than the washout films. Um, so um, we do have quite a bit of working time, but of course, if you're not gonna blast something within a half hour after exposing it, you know, we suggest either leaving it in the electrolyte or putting the, the mask um, in the middle of a, folder or envelope and, and uh, um, or if you've already applied it on a piece put a piece of black plastic over it uh, just keep it out of the light if you're going to take a lunch break or something like that or if it's at the end of the day because if you do leave it out 
the film will continue to expose and it'll ruin your mask. So yeah, so that's a good idea. So just make sure it is covered up if you're, if you're not going to be using it for a while. So now we've exposed our rapid mask. So Andy, you can take that out. And uh, yeah, again, we expose this for two minutes on the two mil. And uh, you'll see when the, where the UV light has passed through the artwork, it turns the rapid mask blue and brittle. So everything blue here now will blast away. Everything green will not blast away. And um, yeah, cameraman Buddy or AKA my husband, if you wanna come and join us over here and we'll work on some applications. So I'm gonna cut away the blue areas outside of our half tone because the blue areas um, in the UV exposure process, the UV light negates the adhesion, the adhesive. So the blue is no longer adhesive and won't stick to the glass, whereas the green will. So I'm gonna cut away the blue here to uh, ensure that we don't have any blow offs there. So Andy, normally would you want a little bit more of a border on there to, to help tape off on your substrate? Yeah, ideally about a half inch of a border is recommended. Okay. That's a good question. Um, the, uh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. We do recommend cleaning uh, your substrate, cleaning your glass. Uh, this is the Iconix uh, foaming glass cleaner. It's a non-ammoniated glass cleaner. The, uh, uh, we don't recommend ammoniated glass cleaners like, like Windex because it'll weaken the adhesive and uh, possibly cause the, the rapid mass to blow off. Um, and most of you out there, you know that you need good adhesion so that you don't have those blow offs. And once you once you have a blow off and you etch an area that doesn't need to be etched, then it's, you really can't go back, so. Absolutely, Michaela. So the, uh, the rapid mask is self-adhesive to get to the adhesive side you remove this little slip sheet and then uh, apply it down um, it's a little hard to see the darker uh, mask on the black glass but um, you kind of got to just you know maybe hold it up to the light get an idea of where it's at um, would you mind grabbing the artwork some people will actually have the artwork next to them as well just so you can kind of eyeball it as, as you're applying it and as you're blasting it. Um, I suggest uh, kind of aligning it where you want it on the piece. It is repositionable, so you can pick it back up if you don't have it aligned where you want it, but uh, lay it down and then squeegee it from one side to the other. So you're just trying to push any air bubbles out of it. Again, we're using the smart jig here uh, that I designed in the, uh, this is kind of the, the pride, my pride in the 12 years I've been at Iconix, I, uh, I designed and, and uh, created one item and that's the smart jig. And everyone loves that smart jig, Andy. <laughs> okay. So uh, we've applied it down. Uh, the final step is to remove the carrier and you can either I don't have much for fingernails, but you can kind of flick it and get the get the carrier sheet off or use a piece of tape, which is a little easier to pull that off. And uh, at this point, if there are any little air bubbles, you can you know pop them with your finger or um, we'll be using the wire wheel here too shortly. So to prevent overspray, obviously the black glass on the sides here, um, you know, the, the blasting will, will uh, spray that and, and we'll blast that. So we're going to tape off around the edges to prevent the overspray. And it's kind of hard to see again because it's black glass, but um, I do have a little border here of about an eighth inch. I think just for the sake of this, let's put something white behind it just so you can easily see where the mask is to where the substrate is. Great idea. Just some little tricks of the trade. All 
All right. So I have this taped off. Oops, almost taped off. A little spot here. And um, so now we're ready to do the final step of the process, which is to uh, wire wheel it. And this just helps to ensure adhesion. Um, and also it pops any little air bubbles that might be in there. So I'm just going to run the wire wheel across the whole mask. Um, with the rapid mask also, the wire wheel helps to loosen up the, the uh, images that you're going to blast and help helps to uh, remove those faster. So we've got this wire wheel, and now we'll move over to the uh, Crystal Blast Elite and we'll blast this piece. So we want to show you some features on the Crystal Blast Elite. I'll pass it over to Andy so he can walk through those with you. And then we'll blast. Thanks, Akela. So this is the Crystal Blast Elite. It's uh, our most popular sandblast cabinet that we sell. Um, a little bit about it, it has a 700 CFM dust collector, which is the largest dust collector uh, for this size cabinet on the market. Uh, it has all the controls up at eye level, um, so you can adjust your blast pressure, everything right up here. Um, the dust collector, as you can see, is on the left side, which gives it more room in the cabinet because the separator reclaimer is off the left side, not in the back. Um, it has uh, for two uh, filter cleaning features, it has a filter vibrator that shakes the filter and knocks the dust off it, and the dust then drops down into the waste hopper. It also has the reverse pulse uh, cleaning feature, which sends a blast of pressure uh, from the inside of the filter out and blows the dust off the filter. It has a, a door here to access the filter, which is nice. Uh, it's a 110 square foot cartridge filter. It's not a bag filter. It's a cartridge filter like you'd find in the, the air cleaner in, in your car. Um, what else? Uh, it has a foot treadle, not a foot pedal. So, so you don't have to look when you step down. You can just step down anywhere on the treadle. It is adjustable. Um, it has a three-way uh, pot valve control to depressurize the pot faster. Uh, it actually releases the pressure of the pot and, and that abrasive and compressed air goes back into the cabinet so you can depressurize faster to then reload the pot faster. Uh, it doesn't have elastic cuffs on the gauntlets or gloves and that's because it's such a has such a large powerful dust collector that it, it it's continuously sucking air in and into the filter. Uh, so even though it doesn't have gloves or elastic cuffs, uh, no abrasive or dust is coming out into the into your room. Um, and because it doesn't have the elastic cuffs, it makes it real nice with smaller items to put them right in, go right in the cabinet versus having to use the door. But it does have a door on the side for larger items. Has um, the uh, LED lighting on the top and LED lighting on the back, which is nice for holding up, looking at a piece to see the depth of your of your next area. That's about it. Just a very nice, clean cabinet that uh, really makes blasting enjoyable. Okay, so we're ready to blast, Grizzly Adams. I'll let you take it away. All right, so uh, you know we have our piece ready to go. A little bit about blasting technique for a half tone. Um, I always say it's like mowing your lawn. You want to take it in rows back and forth to ensure that you have equal blast time in all areas of the piece. Um, so just like you know, just like you would mow your lawn back and forth, you don't want to be all over jumping all around because that. You know, can give you too much blasting in one area and not enough blasting in, in another area. And uh, with a half tone, the the challenge of blasting a half tone is to blast long enough to get the detail. But if you blast if you blast too long, you'll blast away the detail. So to ensure good equal blast time in all areas, just back and forth. So come on over, buddy, and we'll blast. <laughs> Blasting at 20 psi. We have 180 silicon carbide in here, and uh, 
Step on the pedal, get the, get the, the brace of flowing, and then it's just back and forth. once around the border because they didn't get quite all of it blasted around the edge. You might be asking, well, why aren't you wearing gloves? Uh, because the nozzle is a 332nd nozzle, it's a very narrow path of abrasive. So I can actually blast, as you saw, without blasting my fingers, um, which makes it nice for uh, seeing the depth of the, of the edge and, and having just more dexterity. So here, you, I'll hold it up to the LED backlighting. You can hopefully see that we've blasted everything. It looks pretty good. And, and now we'll uh, move on to the removal. All right, so now we've blasted this half tone, and uh, we're just gonna remove the mask. And uh, you can see the the end result. Um, you can soak the rapid mask in water and it'll soften up, or you can just dry peel it, uh, which is what I'm doing here with my thumb. Um, you know, if you had quite a few of these to do, I would recommend soaking it, but uh, if you just have one or two, um, you know, it goes pretty fast just to, to dry peel it off as well. So, all right, and then the the last step is just to give it a little, a little shine with the glass cleaner. And uh, you can even use a hair blow off on the glass, dry it. There we have it. This is a, a half tone on black glass. As you can see, I unfortunately did not tape off right there. So there is a little line on the bottom, but, uh, but yeah, half tone on with rapid mask HD on black glass. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andy. I'm so glad you could join us today. Um, just one little reminder that I did notice there that it's a really good reminder to make sure that when you're making your artwork, leave enough of a border so that you can tape off the edges around your half tone so you don't end up with a line somewhere here or there. Um, other than that, I, I think we did a great job today. Andy, you're awesome at half tones. I wish I was that good. Maybe I'll, Thanks. maybe I'll be able to excel my skills after today's segment. Uh, next week, I, I want to go into um, sand carving metal. I, I really want to do the, the polar camels with you guys. Um, these are super cool. I did try a new trick, so I'll tell you about that next week. Um, other than that, stay tuned. Come watch every week and uh, have a blast. All right, guys, so you've seen that. Um, I apologize again for the technical difficulties. 
uh, that's technology for you. And I think uh, a lot of us these days are are using the internet probably 24 seven, it feels like. Um, so it looks like we had a couple of questions happening or taking place there uh, during the video. Um, so I just wanted to go over a few of those. Um, so it looks like we had one from Laura here who asked, what is the best printer to use for, for inkjet printing? So I think uh, what Laura is referring to there is, uh, you know, when we're using our, our AccuBlack um, transfer films to print our artwork out on, um, we usually recommend uh, an Epson printer. Our, the most popular one that, that we're using now is the Epson P400. Um, before it was the 1430, but that's been discontinued now. Uh, but that was a great printer, and the P400 is kind of a, a good little um, brother or sister printer to that one. Uh, let's see. So we do have Andy on the line here, too. So feel free to ask him any um, detailed questions if, if you want to know more about artwork or sand carving techniques. Um, he's there. Uh, Dr. Feingritz also joining us um, and watching. So, um, yeah, shoot me any questions here and, and I can phone a friend and, and they'll help us out. Um, it looks like uh, Mel, Mel Torres here asked, what software are you using for creating half toning? Um, so the S3 simple sand curving software, um, we, we sell that through Iconics um, and developed that with uh, CadLink Technology, great company. Um, so thanks CadLink for helping us out there. Um, we That's the software that we use for half toning, um, but Adobe or Corel can also be used if, if you have that already. But S3 makes it easier to um, convert and invert all of your artwork over to um, half tones for sand curving purposes. So thanks for asking that question. Um, we have a question from Mary. And Mary would like to know, what is the pressure typically used for blasting halftones? Um, so what I've always learned with blasting halftones um, is that basically you wanna increase your uh, PSI per, sorry, your, your PSI, um, 10 PSI per mil thick of your film, if that makes sense. So for instance, um, in this video that, that me and Grizzly Adams, Andy, uh, did, we were using Rapid Mask HD, which is a two mil thick film. And so we were blasting at 20 PSI because it was two mil. So you take 10 times two, get 20. So if you're using four mil Rapid Mask HT, you're going to be blasting closer to 40. So uh, thanks for that question, Mary. Um, I see that we've got some people chiming in and they wanted to see how to make the half tones. Uh, Cynthia, thanks for bringing that up. Um, I do want to put out uh, some, con some content on converting artwork to make a half tone using S3 or S3 Simple Sand Curving software. So, um, keep watching every week because as soon as we can fine tune that video, I will get that content out to you. Um, I know I know a lot of people are, are curious about that. So I've, I've got a lot of people asking me about different topics and they wanna see a uh, stage carving, uh, they wanna see color filling, all that. So I am addressing all of your your topic concerns and questions. So just, just bear with me and, and be patient and I'll get that out to you. Um, so I think, I mean, I think that all covers it, but, but feel free to ask any other questions. Um, I'll stay on here for another minute or so. Um, yeah, I, I hope you liked it. I, we were, we came into the office today, uh, me, Darren Jones, Peter Norman, um, we're all working on a great, um, trade show video that's going to be aired through the NBM breakaway session number one. 
Uh, so that's, if you haven't already registered for that, that's a digital trade show offered right through NBM. Uh, and that takes place on May 20th. So uh, sign up for that. Our education class um, will be at 11 a.m. Central Time or 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Uh, so jump in on that because we're going to show you a little bit of everything between half tone, stage carving, blazer orange. So we're able to make some really cool half tones for that. Got like Dr. Martin Luther King there and and then I got another uh, mountain scene. So yeah. Um, if you haven't seen our digital trade show segment one, that I did, I will share that link again. Looks like some people were, were interested. Um, so this is the link down here, but I will I will copy it into this, this thread again. And I'll, how about I email it out to all of you too? Um, that'll be a good way. Because anybody who is watching today also gets to take advantage of our trade show special pricing. So, um, that is about 20% off of our R-Series rep mask and so on. Uh, if you have any questions specific to your sales reps or your territory reps, they are working every day. So um, even though we're not all in the office, um, we are here to help you. So make sure you call them. Uh, that is 1-800-643-1037. If you're trying to get uh, Dr. Feingrid or Darren Jones, he's extension 113. Um, Andy Hermatka is 102. Mike Van Overmeren is 167. And um, we, if you haven't heard from her or, or talked to her yet, we do have a new inside sales rep, and that is April Baikonin. So um, if you're if you need to place an order or, or need a little help there, she's, she's available. A um, couple other questions. I have a small exposure unit. What are the larger options for making half tones? Um, I, th I think you're referring to a larger exposure unit, uh, which we do have one of those available. Just for the heck of it, I think that we should phone in a friend. I would love to get Dr. Feingrid on the phone. How about you guys? You, you think we should Give him a call and see what he has to say about large format. Let me know if you can if you can hear that, guys. Your call is being answered <laughs> oh, by a oh. via IP. Hi, this is Dr. Feingren speaking. <laughs> Well, he's just right here with us. <laughs> so we got Darren Jones here in the office, um, or AKA Dr. Feingrit. Um, doctor, we have a question that I would love to get your thoughts on. Okay. Um, the question is, I have a small exposure unit. What are the larger options for making half tones? What are your thoughts? Yeah, with a lunger light unit, you can do 11 inches by 14 inches, so about that big. Okay, we do have a quick image LED. I'll take it here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quick image LED units are 26 inches wide, 21 inches deep, so you can do a larger scale half tone. So that would be your next option. Would be the quick image LED that we offer. Um, otherwise, we do have a stencil service called Monty Mask, where you send us the artwork, and we'll generate a half tone mask and then ship it to you. So that's another option as well. I didn't even think about that option. Thanks, doctor. All right, uh, so our next question, Cynthia, aloha to you too. I, uh, I think we had some reps asking if you if you ever need an on-site visit, they would be happy to visit you out there on your sandy shores. <laughs> Um, Cynthia, I was wondering, can I use R-Series 4 mil for half tones? 
Um, that is a great question. Let's uh, let's call him. I've got a I've got another friend that I want to give a little ring to. We'll see if he answers. You reached the voicemail. Of well, he was watching. I thought he was watching. You might have had another phone call. Let's try Grizzly Adams. <laughs> Grizzly. Hey. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I think our viewers can hear you too. All right. So we got a question here for you about uh, our series four mil. They want to know if you can use that for half tones. What's your thoughts there? Absolutely, you can. Uh, you can you can use washout films, the three, the four, and even a five mil for a half tone. Of course, the thicker the film, you know, the, the uh, more blast resistance, but you lose a little bit of the detail. So like if you're using a four mil or a five mil, you're not going to be able to do, you know, a 55 or a 65 DPI half tone. You might be down, you know, more in the 35 to 45 DPI range. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely uh, use a washout film for half tones. One um, suggestion, though, is is uh, careful in the washout process because uh, with half, you know, with half tones, obviously you have to wash out long enough to get the detail. But if you wash out too long, you'll lose the detail. You'll wash away the detail. So uh, in the washout process with the washout films, you know, uh, just be careful with, with washing it out, um, which is why the rapid mask, no washout film, the dry process film uh, is, is really awesome with half phones because you, you can skip that whole process and, you know, expose it and apply it and blast it and just trust that the detail is there in the half tone. Okay, great. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking too. But um, yeah, you you don't want to lose your detail out there. So um, yeah, no. yeah. I would I would say that the safest bet is probably just to go with the dry process in this. But um, if if washout is your is your avenue, then you know four mil would work just fine. Absolutely. Uh, so I need, I see another question there too. Yeah, the blazer orange uh, for half tones. I actually, I, I seen somebody not too long ago do a half tone with our blazer orange and then sand carpet even. Do you wanna, did you it, see that too, Andy? Yeah, and it, it really worked well. Um, what's nice about using the blazer orange on your laser, this is the, the laser mask we're, we're referring to, the blazer orange mask from Iconics. Uh, so you laser it first on your substrate, and then you bring it to the sand carving cabinet and blast it to get a little more depth. So, uh, and, and also will give you a little smoother, higher quality uh, result. So that, yes, the blazer orange can be used uh, with the half tones, and it'll give you a little more depth, which uh, the laser will not. Uh, so it'll also... With that depth comes the ability then to the option to color fill if you'd like, uh, which is commonly done on, you know, on monuments with granite uh, in, you know, exterior applications. Um, but yeah, you can use it on glass as well. And it'll just give you, give you a little deeper, higher quality, smoother uh, result. So great, awesome. great question there. Awesome. Well, thanks, Andy, and I just wanted to say thanks again for making this segment with me because it's, you know, it's really important for us to stay connected with all of our viewers out there during this crazy time. Um, so we appreciate that. Uh, it looks like there's a more specific question for you. Uh, did you see that pop up? Yeah. So Sean is making a five foot by seven foot half tone. What is the recommended artwork DPI? Does it differ from a smaller piece? Uh, good question. You probably want to keep it on the lower side um, because obviously, you know, uh, if you get too fine with that large of a piece, 
you're going to be probably looking at it further away. Obviously, if it's five foot by seven foot, it would be just too detailed. Um, so I would suggest sticking down to the, you know, the 35 range or 45 uh, DPI range um, to make the dots larger. So then it's going to stand out better from a little bit further away. So yeah, great question there. Hopefully I answered it for you. Awesome. All right, cool. Well, Sean, there you have it. There's your answer there. All right. Yeah. Well, well, thank you, Michaela. It was it was very fun working in your garage <laughs> with, with your uh, cameraman buddy, also <laughs> your husband. I uh, really appreciate the invite. Uh, I had a really enjoyable time with you. Absolutely, anytime, anytime. I'll I'll tell uh, I'll tell my husband you said so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, thanks, Andy. Right. Bye bye. Yep, take care. Bye bye. All right, guys. Well, I, th I think that's enough questions for today, um, but I will be back next week. Um, if, if I'm able to crank some, some content out for you, I'll try and get you another episode this Friday um, on, on etching metal, specifically uh, the polar camels from, from JDS. So, um, but if it's not this Friday, I will work on getting that to you next week. Um, some other events from Iconics. If you don't already know, uh, Darren Jones, Dr. Fine Grit has his own YouTube channel as well. So I recommend you checking out those episodes every Wednesday. Um, this Wednesday, he is sand carving um, a deep carve of the MMHD film. Uh, He's going to be doing that on a slate coaster. So um, that's Dr. Fine Grit. So subscribe so you can get that notification um, and watch in real time. Uh, we also just did an episode um, where Trotec Laser and Iconics Imaging came together. And uh, we did a great webinar on um, laser, orange laser mask and uh, some glass blocks that that we got from JDS Industries, which is a great product. So uh, if you're interested in getting that link, I can send that out to you also. And then, um, yeah, tune in for that MVM breakaway session, check it out on their website and just keep watching for my trade show videos. I, I hope you're enjoying them. And if you wanna see anything specific, don't hesitate to ask, reach out, uh, give me a call, whatever, we'll, we'll make it work. So. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great Tuesday, and we'll see you later. Bye.